Hi, I'm Richard Olley of Kingswood Training. Over the last 10 years, we've established a great reputation for delivering high quality tree surgery and forestry courses. All of our instructors have had many years of industry experience before qualifying to become Lantra instructors and assessors. They're not just excellent teachers, they're professional tree surgeons and foresters who teach from a wealth of relevant commercial experience. In this DVD, we're going to take a look at what is involved in our most commonly run courses. We're going to start with chainsaw maintenance and cross cutting, felling small trees, wood chippers, stump grinders, climbing and rescue, using a chainsaw from rope and harness, pole saws, brush cutters, and finally dismantling. Chainsaw maintenance and cross cutting. This unit is known in the trade as CS30. You will learn how to strip down a chainsaw, service it, reassemble it, then sharpen the chain. You will then use the saw to cross cut timber. You will be assessed on CS30 by an independent assessor and he will ask you questions to establish your level of understanding. The course also covers a variety of health and safety issues including risk assessment and how to choose the correct personal protective equipment. Felling small trees. This unit is known as CS31. The name is somewhat misleading because the definition of a small tree is one which has a diameter less than 380 mil, but a tree that size could be 20 meters high or more. You will be taught about site safety and how to use a standard felling cut to fell a tree exactly where you want it to go. You will then learn at least two specialist cuts to enable you to fell trees that lean back slightly or forward severely. Sometimes trees will accidentally become hung up, which means that they become lodged in another tree. And we'll teach you how to get them down safely. You will be assessed on CS31 by an independent assessor and he will ask you questions to establish your level of understanding and then he'll ask you to fell two trees safely using the cuts you have learnt. You will then watch as you remove the branches and cross cut and stack the logs. Here at Kingswood we are very proud that 95% of our candidates pass their assessments at the first attempt. The wood chipper course. Tree surgery can produce a tremendous volume of leafy waste which needs to be processed and the machine that we use is a wood chipper. They come in various sizes from domestic units right through to gigantic machines which devour whole trees in minutes. For training purposes we use a medium sized machine which is typical of the size used by most tree surgeons. They will chip a six inch diameter branch at over a foot a second, so they definitely need to be used safely. We start off in looking at how the machines work and how to service them before going on site. Next we look at start procedures and the safety checks, and then the instructor demonstrates the use of the machine before overseeing its use by candidates. The instructor will then review the day checking that the candidates have fully understood all the main points before hopefully issuing them with certificates. Once the tree has been felled, it will leave a stump at or just above ground level. In some areas, these can be left to rot naturally, but in others they will need to be removed. This would be a very difficult job without the right machine, but stump grinders make light work of it. As with chippers, they come in many different shapes and sizes, but what they all have in common is a flywheel with a set of tungsten teeth which simply beats the stump to pieces. We train with a very common type called a pedestrian stump grinder. The course follows the same layout as the day on wood chippers, with a session in the workshop covering maintenance and tooth replacement, before an on-site session where everyone has a chance to try their hand at developing the necessary skills and techniques. The instructor then checks that the candidates have gained the necessary level of skill and understanding before issuing certificates. We start the climbing and rescue session. This course is delivered in two modules, 
Candidates first have to learn to climb and then they learn how to perform an aerial rescue. Like all the other courses, this one starts with a theory session. It is essential to understand how the climbing system is put together and to learn to tie a variety of knots. We also look at a few bits of relevant legislation and consider how they apply to tree climbing. The practical session then begins with candidates starting off climbing to the lower branches and getting used to the system before graduating to higher branches and bigger trees. They then learn to walk out along the branches away from the stem. When they feel confident doing this, they undertake simulated rescues of an injured climber. There are in fact four different rescue scenarios to learn, including one where the casualty is up a pole on climbing spikes. These rescues are actually timed during the assessment to make sure that the candidate is competent to perform a real rescue in a reasonable time. Using a chainsaw in a tree. This is where you will put all your skills together and learn to use a chainsaw safely in the canopy. Adhering to clear safety guidelines is absolutely essential. And after a theory session which explains the do's and don'ts, the climbers ascend separate trees to learn to make a variety of cuts. Some of the cuts are designed to make the branches free fall away from the climber, and others allow the climber to put the saw away before snapping the branch off and throwing it into a designated drop zone. The final day of the course is taken up with climbing assessments. Again, an independent assessor comes in and checks the candidate's knowledge and abilities over the whole spectrum of skills they have learnt. Pole saws, or powered pole pruners, consist of an engine, often two-stroke, a shaft, which is often telescopic, and a chainsaw bar and chain. The purpose of the machine is to allow pruning of low branches from the ground, therefore avoiding the time, effort and risk of unnecessary climbing. They are ideal for low canopy raising and trimming of epicormic growth. The Lantra Pole Saw course is delivered in two parts, maintenance and operation, and it prepares delegates for an independent assessment. Part 1, which covers maintenance, is only required if the delegate does not hold a chainsaw maintenance qualification. It covers how the power head works, and how it is serviced, including air filters, spark plugs, the recall mechanism, and fueling. We then look at the shaft and the bar and chain, including sharpening and bar maintenance and lubrication. Because the chainsaw is working above the head of the operator, he is likely to come into contact with oil spraying from the chain, and therefore we use biodegradable oil if possible. Part 2 looks at the practical use of the machine, and this starts with fitting it comfortably to a harness to avoid musculoskeletal injury. We then look at pre-start checks, starting procedures, and safety checks before undertaking a practical exercise. We consider the different types of cut that can be used for particular situations and how to choose the correct one. Some of these cuts involve undercutting. The inherent risks of undercutting is that the saw may occasionally become trapped, so we also look at how to release a trapped saw safely. Strimmers and brush cutters. This is a Lantra course which is assessed by the instructor as the day progresses. Most people are familiar with strimmers, a machine that uses a lightweight flexible cord to cut light vegetation in areas that are hard to mow. A brush cutter is a similar machine, though often more powerful, that performs a similar function on heavier vegetation using a rigid blade. This course looks at both types of machine, both from the point of view of maintenance and operation. We begin in the workshop discussing the health and safety legislation we need to comply with, the 
PPE we need to wear and the safety features of the machine. We then consider the three different engine types which are common to strimmers and brush cutters and discuss the relevant maintenance and fueling requirements of each. We look in detail at the range of head attachments which are available including different types of nylon cord and how to load them into the head as well as rigid blades of various designs. Choice of head is an important decision as is sharpening, balancing and checking for cracks. Correct harness adjustment is crucial to the comfort of the operator as well as affecting the quality of the finished work. Before leaving the workshop we consider how the direction of rotation of the head affects the pattern of work when a large area is being cut. We then move outside to run through the pre-start checks, start procedures and safety checks. A thorough inspection of the work area is important to search for wire, bottles, rocks etc as well as for rare plants. Starting with strimming, we cut an area paying attention to cutting a level swathe in straight lines using an ergonomic technique. Moving on to steel blades, we take on heavier vegetation, cutting it with a scything technique and keeping the cut material off the uncut areas. If time allows, we end the day using a masher blade to reduce brambles which requires a completely different technique to any other type of head. Dismantling, or rigging as it is sometimes known, is the science of using craning points in the tree so that the cut timber is lowered to the ground under control. In this course we try and teach people how to take the guesswork out of rigging and use known physical principles to undertake the task safely and efficiently. The course is in preparation for an independent assessment. Each day of the course starts with a theory session, looking at the equipment available and how it is actually deployed in the tree. The equipment comes into five categories. Ropes, pulleys, slings, including split tails and whoopies, friction devices and ancillary items. We look at each of these in turn and make sure that when we assemble a rigging kit for use it is well matched and the overall safe working load of the system is known. We also consider the concepts behind the operation, in particular dynamic loading and how to reduce or eliminate it, fall factors, safety factors, and how varying configurations increase or decrease peak loads. Some equipment is quite confusingly marked, so we look at the relationship between kilograms and kilonewtons, the minimum braking loads and the safe working loads. The single most important concept when choosing craning points in the tree is force vectoring, and we consider how this concept allows us to put safe and effective redirects in the tree every time. The practical elements of the course are divided into two categories, branch removal and chogging down a stem. Branch removal is usually achieved with a craning point above the branch, whereas when chogging down the stem the anchor point is below the piece being removed. This makes dynamic loading inevitable, so we look at how to reduce it. There are essentially three standard ways to rig a branch for lowering. Tip roped, where the butt end falls away. Butt roped, where the tip end falls away. And balance or spider rigged, where two or more attachments are made to the branch so that it retains its level in the tree whilst being lowered. We look at each of these methods and consider which cut would be best for each situation and how to determine which direction the branch will move when it is severed. It is impossible to know if we are working safely if we do not know, at least roughly, 
what the sections weigh that we are removing. We demonstrate the use of log weight tables to achieve this. We also look at the huge benefits of pre-tensioning the lowering system and explain how this enables the arborist to work faster as well as safer. When all the branches have been removed, the arborist is left with a standing stem and nothing to lower it from but an anchor point below the section being removed. We consider in some detail the do's and don'ts of topping out and in particular how to remove the risk of the remaining stem from splitting. Correct connection of the arborist to the tree is absolutely essential and his system should always be configured to allow rapid and efficient descent from the stem if necessary. When removing sections of stem we look at a range of techniques to minimise the inevitable shock load that would otherwise risk applying excessive dynamic forces to the lowering system. These include the use of tug lines, the type of cut being used, the length of rope in the system and the skilled use of the capstan to name but a few. On a rigging course lasting a few days you could learn more than you would find out for yourself in a whole career. You will learn to work faster, more efficiently and more safely and you'll be able to take on difficult work with confidence and enthusiasm. I hope you found this overview interesting. We look forward to hearing from you if you like a challenge. Mm -hmm.